It's what I have Desire Ooh. Knowing you Is what I want To do Father we give you the praise Father we give you the honor We give you the adoration Breathe upon this service this morning Let not one person Live here the same way they have come draws closer to you intimately place a deposit of something on our life let it be clear to all that it was your presence we came not the presence of a man thank you master in Jesus precious name give the Lord a praise as you take your seat a very very deeply spiritual climate here this morning and we are going to ride on it as we look at the necessity of prayer part two Ephesians 6 and in verse 18 He said, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. And watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all sins. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 17 said pray without season necessity of prayer part 2 and our objective is to understand why it is absolutely necessary and critical to pray He said, pray without season, without stopping. Wow. Praying always. That is, pray more than you eat. 
pray more than that's dynamis Amsterdam Holland Wow pray more than you eat pray more than you play Pray more than you socialize. Pray without season. Pray like your heart beats. Because there are two things in your body that happens without stopping. Your breathing and your heartbeat. Why is prayer so necessary? Why is it so necessary for us to do, to pray as frequently as we are asked to pray? I mentioned four things in the first service. Time will not permit me to go over them. But I'd like you to take the first service message. You can find it on YouTube. You can get the CDs. But I'll start from number one, which is number five actually. Why is it absolutely necessary to pray? One. Man is a spiritual being who lives in a spiritual world. with most of life's transactions being spiritual. Let me say it again. Man is a spiritual being that lives in a spiritual world. And most of our life's transactions are spiritual. That was why in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23, he said, And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray God your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Most of life's transactions are spiritual. And spiritual transactions are mostly handled at the altar of prayer. Are you seeing the equation? Man is spiritual. Most of life's transactions are spiritual. And spiritual transactions are mostly carried out at the altar of prayer. If the life of Jabez is going to be changed, it cannot be changed in the physical. It has to be changed from the spiritual. Jabez living a life that was sorrowful was a spiritual matter. It only reflected in the physical. In First Chronicles chapter 4 and in verse 9 and 10, the Bible said, and Jabez was more honorable than his brethren and his Mother called his name Jabez, saying, because I bear him with sorrow. Jabez called, and that is this transaction now. Called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou would bless me indeed and enlarge my coast, and that thy hand might be with me, and that thou would keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. And the Lord granted him that which he requested. That was a spiritual transaction that changed the spiritual situation giving us physical reflection. A spiritual transaction changing a spiritual situation with physical reflections and manifestation that is carried out at the altar of prayer. There are things about your life that you are looking at from the physical that are purely spiritual. If 
Jacob will become Israel, it must happen as a spiritual transaction. Genesis chapter 32 and in verse 28, we saw how Jacob wrestled. And then the angel said unto him, And thy name shall be called no more Jabez, Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince hast thou bowed with God, and with men, and hast prevailed. I see something changing in somebody's life today. If you are saying amen, say louder, amen. If you are saying amen, say louder, amen. If you are saying amen, shout the loud most amen. So that is why prayer is necessary. Because man is a spiritual being. Lives in a spiritual world. And most of our life's transactions are spiritual. And these transactions are effected at the altar of prayer. Somebody say a loud amen. Number two. Everything on earth can fail at the altar of prayer. We connect with the unfailing God. Everything on earth can fail. Why do we pray? Everything on earth can fail, but at the altar of prayer, we connect with the God. Who cannot fail. God who cannot fail means God who cannot change. Malachi chapter 3 and in verse 6. He said, I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. I fail not. I change not means I fail not as well. Lamentation chapter 3 and in verse 22 all the way to verse 23 he said it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not they are new every morning great is thy faithfulness somebody say amen and Numbers chapter 23 and in verse 19 say God is not a man that he should lie neither the son of man that he should repent has he said and, and shall he not do it or has he spoken and shall he not make it good he can't fail and he cannot lie somebody say amen everything can fail education fails connection fails even persons fail. The other day I was ministering and they commanding the day midnight prayer. And I said that there is someone watching. You, have, you do something with the eye. Whether you are an optometrist or an ophthalmologist or something in that realm. But the devil is challenging you and using your career to challenge you. Because you yourself, you have an eye problem that cannot be healed. Anybody heard that to remember that? And the man works in a teaching hospital, an optometrist. He said he had this challenging eye situation that he was ashamed to go to his to, to consultants to us because he didn't know what to tell that was wrong with him. He couldn't even describe the symptoms. But his eye was going. That was education failure. Expertise failure. Learning failure. What you learned couldn't help you. And as soon as that word came, that devil was arrested on the spot. That happened at the altar of prayer. Hallelujah. Connection fails. How many of you, you have had connections that failed you? human beings another name for man is change 
You see, it's very, very consistent for man to change and fail. Some people don't voluntarily want to fail, but they bowed for human frailty. Some people, the circumstances around them made it impossible for them not to fail. When my wife and I were getting married 30 years ago, we had great promises. Somebody was going to take care of the feeding and the cow and the things he wants to buy. He was banking on the contract money that was to be paid for him. That money was paid only after the wedding. My wife was the doctor to the first lady of the state at that time. We expected that the first lady and the husband and all of them would be at the wedding. It's possible to calculate in your mind what the possibilities are. If such people arrive at your wedding, what they can do? Can they give a car? Can they give a free? Whatever can they give? Government changed before that date. <laughs> ola, ola. It was as if all the things worked together to make sure the things didn't happen. I invited three major ministers from different parts of the country. None of them came. They are coming failed and it was not their fault. Terrible fuel crisis in the country. All of a sudden, they couldn't come. I'm so sorry, I cannot come. I'm so sorry, I cannot. Three of them. But the unfailing God was there. The wedding did not fail. And the marriage is over successful. You know, wedding is one, is one day. Marriage is a life. People prepare for wedding, but don't prepare for marriage. Hallelujah. That is why we... we so that you are, not, you, are not to, you are not shocked by human failure. Because even yourself, you fail yourself. True of us. How many times you made decision, I wouldn't do this again. Or I would do this, I would do that. And you, you yourself didn't do it. Many people make New Year resolution every New Year. I won't smoke again. I won't drink again. I won't have this kind of friend again. Before January finish. Hallelujah. That is why we must be connected at the altar of prayer because everything can fail. The only thing that cannot fail is God. I prophesy to somebody here, the end of failure in your life is here. You believe that, shout the Lord and say amen. When you are a prayerful man, you are not afraid of anything that can fail. You are not afraid of economic, economic failure. Government failure. You're not afraid of the failure of anything. Because you are connected to a personality and a system. A heavenly system that cannot fail. Somebody say it loud, amen. Number three. Why did we, were we asked to pray like we breathe? Number three, because... Life is full of darkness, wickedness, and battles. Life is full of darkness, full of wickedness, full of battles. Isaiah chapter 60 verse 1 said, Arise, shine. Thy light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. And gross darkness, the people. Darkness covers the earth. Gross darkness, the people. Whether you are a Christian or not, immaterial. Darkness covers the earth. Gross darkness, the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee and his glory shall be seen upon thee. First John chapter 5 verse 19. Look at very, very 
serious situation there. He said, and we know that we are of God. And the next thing we know is that the whole world lieth in wickedness. And we know that we are of God. But there is something else we know. And that is that the whole world lieth in wickedness. Wickedness, wickedness. Ephesians chapter 6 and in verse 10. He said, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle. The fact is that we wrestle. The truth is that we wrestle. What is clear is that we wrestle. Except that it's not against flesh and blood. But it's against principalities. Against powers. Against the rulers of the darkness of this world. Against spiritual wickedness in high places. And you keep on going and going and going. Then when you reach verse 18. It tells you what to do because of this wrestle. Praying always. With all prayer and supplication. In the spirit. And watching there unto with all perseverance and supplication. For all sins. Why? We wrestle. Listen. You don't have to offend anybody to encounter wickedness. You don't have to be interested to encounter confrontation or battles. All you need is just be alive and you are in a battlefield. you need is just be on it and you're on a battleground am i communicating at all so you must remain spiritually intense one woman was testifying the other day how the doctor that was attending to her once she saw the doctor she felt uncomfortable on tuesday right and i eh? Commanding the day. Last night. Yes. And, and the doctor, she said that the moment the doctor entered the labor ward, he became, she became uncomfortable. And then the doctor will come and tap her tummy like this. Tap, 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 tap. Which is not an examination known to me, except if it's a new type of examination. Until the husband said, why are you tapping her like that? The woman began to pray for God to deliver her from that doctor. Suddenly another woman had an emergency session. The doctor was arranged the way to attend to that woman. Under 30 minutes, this one delivered. This is where I'm going. She entered, she went to deliver. As innocent as delivery is, she encountered a doctor of questionable spiritual leaning. I'm sorry to say this, but do you know if the doctor that wanted to attend to you is an occultic one? Do you know if the person who wants to take your delivery is a witch whose agenda is to take as many babies as possible? Do you know if the driver that is trying to drive you is an occult driver that has an assignment of transfer, transferring as much blood as possible? I'm not saying this to frighten you, but that's the reality of life. Do you know what they put in the food that you went to buy? I'm not frightening you. But you can be sure that if you eat deadly things, it shall not hurt you if you are a child of God. So, but you must, you must be awake and alert at the place of prayer because we live in a world of wickedness, the world of evil. Little boy gave his friend sweet in school. 
the friend forgot to lick it and put it in his pocket. Mother is checking the boy's pocket and bring something out. It's a human finger. That sweet has, is, is, is not ordinary sweet. Where is this? How did you get this? My friend gave me sweet in school. I put it in pocket. So the friend in school is a, a little wizard, a wizardlet that is trying to initiate an innocent boy in school. That is why I say praying always, 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 with all prayer and supplication, pray without season. The devil knows that his time is short, so he's doing a lot of overtime. And they Demand is placed on you to be intense at the place of prayer so you can collapse the devil anywhere you meet him. Somebody say amen. amen. I went to minister somewhere. It will be up to 30 years ago. No, more than 30. Let's say 86 kind of time like 38 years ago, 37 years ago. Just a young convert, about two years ago, predicated. The Lord sh showed before, while we prayed, the Lord showed that somebody was going to come to that meeting in the realm of the spirit, upside down, head down, leg up, to attack. And the moment I stepped in there, the Lord showed me the person. All tackle was given, she came out. Looking at me like a devil that was so angry like, I wish I can finish you now. When I saw that, me too, wish I can finish you now. I gave one scream. She was lifted from the ground, flushed across the louver on her way out. How she landed, broke glass, whatever happened, I don't know. Did you take his picture just now? Don't do that. Not in entertainment. Hallelujah. Went on innocent preaching. But somebody came to fight you. Say praying always. Somebody say a louder amen. amen. Somebody say a louder amen. amen. No devil will take you by surprise. Amen. You won't lose another battle in your life. Amen. You won't lose another battle in your life. Amen. Many of us, you just went for an interview. The other person went to native doctor before he arrived. The other person put something on his tongue. Somebody said the other day that a young lady came to visit his boss in the office. And when it was her turn to go in, she was carrying her bag and out of her bag came out charm cowrie shell or something that fell out of the bag. She just carried something and tapped her tongue before stepping inside. And then that one began to say, uh, please bring the fire. Where is the Let's sign, let's sign. He has been jazzed. You don't know who is talking to you with something on their tongue. Some young ladies' heads are turned by a diabolic man marrying a devil with eyes open. It will never be a portion. That is why he said, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Is it not a mystery that a man abandons his wife, his children, 
They say, bring food money. He's screaming the hell on the head of the woman for 50,000. But he just signed 5 million for the strange girl. He just effortlessly. Enter jet first class. Private jet everywhere in the world. But I'm saying, children's school, am I digging money from the ground? You yourself, pay the children's school fees by yourself. Head jazzed by a Jezebel. We live in a wicked world. There are people, their appearance in your life is the disappearance of peace. Anywhere peace was found, if they arrive, peace has ended. Anywhere joy was found, if they arrive, joy finishes, it expires. They hate happiness. If something was working there, it has gone. You must be very sensitive. One lady testified yesterday. You remember the, the story of the lady who testified? How their house went, became upside down when his father married the wife, right? The mother died. He drove the mother away and imported another woman. And then drove the house turned upside down when that woman arrived. It wasn't Jezebel. Because he said the woman is a witch, a native doctor, and a patronizer of shrines. That one woman. That is personal, devil in person. She is a native doctor herself, a witch, and patronizes native doctors. That the wife of a person. So the man sees the children, he's cursing them, he's insulting everybody. He drove away the woman. Our once lovely father became something else. When everybody has scattered, the man himself came to zero. Suddenly his eyes began to open gradually. You know what happened? After declaration was made from this altar, she was prayed for here first. She came, look, he nearly committed suicide. Yes, she came, she was brought to see me. She came to Abuja, she was brought to see you. You prayed for her. As soon as you prayed for her, the evil woman left her father's house. She was restored to the father and the other children. And then in the commanding the day midnight prayer, a day to that day, a declaration was made against witches and wizards and then the father texted her to say that the tyrant the tyrant is dead that is the word the word the man used the tyrant the tyrant the lovely father came back to himself peace returned because one person entered a family you will never see such in your life you will never see such in a life huh? the father had prostate he had hypertension he had everything once the woman died he became well everything disappeared that is why he said even if you are on the road and you remember this passage pray with us isn't it? just start praying Mercy Lord, You will never be a victim. You will never be a victim. In the next few minutes, we'll take about 15 minutes like we did in the first service and just pray brutally and ask Jehovah God to clean out every wickedness agent of the devil positioned around our lives and we shall receive liberty in Jesus precious name life is full of darkness wickedness 
full of battles. That is why it is important for us to pray. And when you pray, you get sensitive. Finally, spiritual fire and intensity are generated and maintained at the altar of prayer. Spiritual fire and intensity, they are generated, they are maintained at the altar of prayer. In Acts chapter 1 and in verse 14, Acts chapter 1 verse 14, the Bible said, this all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, with his brethren. They continued. And when they continued, Acts chapter 2 verse 1 happened. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly, there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them clothing tongues like as of fire. And he sat upon them, each of them, and they were filled with the Holy Ghost. And began to speak with tongues, other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. Hallelujah. So you, 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 Spiritual fire and intensity are generated. They are maintained at the altar of fire, prayer. And what is this to you? First of all, spiritual fire and intensity generated. All right, let me say it the other way. Spiritual fire and intensity are crucial in order for life not to be drowned in generational lukewarmness. Generational lukewarmness and compromise. We live in a lukewarm world. We live in a compromiseful world. We need to generate and maintain spiritual fire through prayer. So that the lukewarmness of the world does not drown your spirituality. The Bible said, in the last days, perilous time shall come. Second Timothy chapter 3 and in verse 1. Men shall be lovers of themselves. The word perilous, one translation said, strength reducing times. Strength reducing. We live in the days when spiritual strength can be reduced. So you make up your mind to maintain your altar of prayer, altar of fire. When I was in medical school, I prayed between one hour to three hours every day. That was what enabled me to sustain the intensity and the rigors of academic training plus the very, very wayward campus climate. The campus that we went through. I think if you count about five campuses nationwide, there will be one of those campuses where you have all the most explosive kind of life. You are dealing with academics, medical school, that naturally should drain you and make you have every reason not to be prayerful. Because of the bulk of work. 6 a.m. 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Every day. For six years. 30 minutes to one hour drive. Do you understand what I'm saying? And then you are in a climate where those who are smoking are smoking. Girls and boys are just free. Every are just moving about living how they, want, they wish. And you want to maintain fire there. The easiest thing is for your fire to die on the spot. For every good reason. Good in quote. But my own fire was on the intensity. I was more like a minister of God on the campus. Why? I decided to deliberately maintain that fire. That is what I'm saying to somebody here today. If this world and what is going on in this world. And I'm, I'm happy that they are watching me from Europe. Because many people, one of the sisters who attended our conference in Houston, Texas, she said she is so happy she came to be revived. I told them there, I said, in our country, 
We are not preaching and be drinking water. So one of them said, they had a guest minister some time ago that he drank more water than he preached. <laughs> he said, and so as I'm talking, praise God. Praise God. You know what? You need God in your life because He said, so the sister said, I came from Nigeria and America has almost domesticated and Americanized me. He said, in their own church, tea is available for everybody to drink. The pastor is, the pastor is drinking, everybody is drinking coffee and service is on. Meshai. <laughs> <laughs> he, said, he said that was how her life became normalized just normal no prayer, no zeal, no fire nothing they showed me the picture of the other day of another church I think all the men, everybody was in shock maker <laughs> just shock maker very very casual Men and women, both men and women, all of them in, in short liquor. Chewing gum. <laughs> when, I, when I said that in America, Mike Astampley said, he was in a meeting the other day, he preached for almost two hours. But he said, but I didn't drink water. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So we live in it. And that's why I'm saying, for some of us in the, in the West, everything they are want to acclimatize you. Normal, fat, zero spiritual life. But you need to maintain your altar of prayer. A second reason why the altar of prayer, spiritual fire and intensity must be maintained is in order to avoid existence as, as a victim of the forces of hell. Forces of evil. You know, flies will only perch on the stove that is cold. Anytime you see stove that has flies on it, there is one way to know that this stove can have flies. That stove has no fire. Even if the fly was asleep and it is in his dream, he can perch on his stove that carries fire. There is an extent to which the forces of hell will look for you if you carry fire. There are some they send in our direction. They will take permission from the devil to change direction. Except if they don't want to return back with, a, with their wings and their life or their legs. Or they want to be quarantined in hell until their judgment day. Stand up on your feet. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. Any, anybody ready for fire this morning? Do you want to generate some fire this morning? When I say pray for 15 minutes and all of us are praying together, one shall chase a thousand, two shall chase ten. That 15 minutes that you are praying with us is almost like one hour because of the energy of synergy. Am I communicating? Doing it by your own has, an, has limited effect. But when you do it together with the brethren, we are, we are joining fire with fire. You know, it's like firewood together makes bigger fire than one single wood. That is the fire we are about to experience. I want us to experience 15 minutes of intense fire. Stand on your feet and let's pray. Stand on your feet and let's pray. Stand on your feet and stand on your feet and stand on your feet and stand on your feet. And, on your feet and, on your feet. and we are about to undergo, undergo, embark on certain transactions in the realm of the spirit this morning. 
and change some things some people that are Jacob are about to become Israel some Jabez are about to become honorable at this altar of prayer you say amen say it louder amen at this altar of prayer some activity of evil that had taken place around your life before today they are about to be reversed they are about to be annulled they are about to be counteracted some people who are low in spiritual fire your fire is about to shift to another level amen Lift your hands everywhere you are. Oh. Amen. I'm going to lead everybody in a prayer of surrender. And then lead everybody in a prayer of baptism of the Holy Ghost. Lift your hands and say after me, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Lord, everybody on the gallery everywhere you are, say Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I am a sinner. I am a sinner. In need of your help. In need of your help. Jesus. Jesus. Come into my life. Come into my life. Make me a new person. Make me a new person. Today. Today. I have, decided I have decided to follow you, Lord. Follow you, Lord. No turning back. No turning back. I receive your grace. I receive your grace to live for you. To live for you. To do your will. To do your will. To fulfill your purpose. Your purpose. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. To live for you. To live for you. To do your will. To do your will. To fulfill your purpose. Your purpose. Thank you, Lord. Thank, Thank you, Lord. Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Say louder, Amen. Amen. And now we are going to ask for the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Many of us who have the baptism of the Holy Ghost already, with the evidence of speaking with tongues, get ready for it to shift in level, to shift to another level, to shift to another dimension. Those who are not yet filled with the Holy Ghost, get ready to get filled. All that happens is you surrender yourself and ask the Holy Ghost to take absolute charge of you. And when it is time to pray, you open your mouth. The words that came at, come across your mind, let it glow, let it flow. Alternatively, as you open your mouth, you just flow as, you, as, your, as, as the Spirit leads you. Just let it go. You may not, what may be coming out looks like it's not making sense or it doesn't make any meaning, but it makes a lot of sense in the realm of the Spirit. Are you following what I'm saying here today? Lift up your hands now and say after me, say, Father, Father, thank you, thank you for the gift, for the gift of your Son, of your Son, Jesus, Jesus. Say, Jesus, Jesus. Thank you, thank, thank you. you. For the gift, for the gift of the Holy Spirit, of the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, take your place, take your place in my life, in my life, take your place, take your place in my life, in my life, flow through me, flow through me as I speak, as I speak in tongues, in tongues, in the language, in the language of the Spirit, of the Spirit, to make transaction, to make transaction in the realm of the Spirit, in the realm of the Spirit, to connect with the God, to connect with the God who cannot fail, who cannot fail. To Collapse, to collapse, satanic wickedness, satanic wickedness around my life, around my life, and to receive fresh fire, receive fresh fire. I receive now, I receive now in Jesus' name. In Jesus, name. lift your hands high. When you pray, be sensitive. There will be diverse encounters. There will be visitations. There will be healing. There will be deliverances. Just pray with intensity. Pray with passion. Something is happening. When I say in the name of Jesus, receive the fire, the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You will scream. I receive lift your hands now receive father let the fire I will say in the name of Jesus one two three receive the fire of the Holy Ghost the back of the book. I receive lift your hands high 15 minutes are you ready in the name of Jesus receive the fire and the baptism of the Holy Spirit now
Everywhere you are. Everywhere you are. That's right. That's right. That's right. Fire.
Lift up your hands, get you are. Lift your hands high. Get ready to receive something. When I say the name of Jesus, one, two, three, you scream and receive. You are receiving raw, practical fire. As a fire, you can remember, you come back to your seat. Receiving raw, practical fire. Raw, practical fire. Hook your hands together. They are suffice. And lift it up. Fresh, raw, practical fire. Fresh fire. Let it flow. Receive it. In the name of Jesus. One, two, and three. Dead! Fire! Fire! Receive the flow. Receive the flow. Receive the flow. Receive the flow. Receive. Lift your hands everywhere you are. Mahasharana. When I say in the name of Jesus, you receive you scream. I receive and place your hand on your head. Yoke shall break. Ancestral curses shall go. Generational curses shall be broken. Mystery shall be unveiled. Agenda of wickedness and witchcraft shall be dissolved. Your spiritual fire shall shift in levels. Are you ready? Let it be. Father, let it be. In the name of Jesus. One. And I say two. And then three you scream. Fire! And place your hand on your head. Father, let the fire flow. In the name of Jesus, one, two, and three. Fire! 